Leslie Show on the television, not the radio. And if you're watching on that YouTube channel, give it a good like and hit the this subscribe. This is the Leslie Show. Leslie Show. We have fun here, you know. On the this Leslie is the Leslie Show. show. Hi everybody, this is Daisy Mae Sheldonbacker, and I'm here for the Leslie Show today. She couldn't make it, she's off running errands, so I'm, I'm taking over, so I hope you like the show today. Anyway, I hope you guys all had a nice Thanksgiving. I discovered something about Thanksgiving. You know those taters that you eat? It's been scientifically, scientifically proven that the potatoes have feelings. Right before you're going to put that potato in the pot and boil it or fry it or whatever you do with the thing, man, I'll tell you what, they start getting nervous. But it's only one type of potato that's like that. What? You want to know what it is? It's hesitators. Anyways, we got a great show today. Oh my God, you won't believe who's going to be on the show. Excuse me, who's going to be on the show? We got Amherst Lorette Taylor and Darren Doran. They're both stars. They're both actors, singers, musicians. One of them's a comedian. They can do it all, and it's going to be a fun show. So stay tuned to The Leslie Show. Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Leslie Show. And we have our guest today, Amaris Lorette Taylor. And she's quite the amazing woman. She is a singer, a dancer. She's a songwriter. And she does all kinds of great things, and I feel really honored to have her on our show today. So welcome to the show, Amaris. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I got some good questions for you. What I was wondering is, what inspired you to become an actress and singer and all you do? I have very supportive parents. Ever since I was a little girl, they were artists themselves, so they said, go for it. Follow your dreams, shoot for the moon, see where you land, and basically, you can't go wrong. So your parents were in show business too? They were. They actually met in a band together out in Hollywood. So your mother and father were both singers? So my dad played bass and guitar, pretty much anything with strings. And my mother was a keyboardist and singer-songwriter. So they did uh, like rock and roll, very eclectic, funky. You know, it was the, the 80s, so they had fun. All right. <laughs> well, do you have like a favorite singer that uh, you aspire to be like? Oh, man. Well, I just try and aspire to be myself because that's the only thing I'm good at. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> but I, I appreciate a wide variety of music. Um, my mother grew up performing, and she was a professional dancer out in Hollywood and did a lot of commercials and acting, and she was very proactive in introducing me in a wide variety of music as well was my dad so I love everything from Pink Floyd to Joni Mitchell to mm, Grateful Dead I don't know did you take just, voice lessons or are you just innately a good singer I was in choir for many many years all through high school and I went to um, a performing arts elementary school in LA that I was accidentally placed into because the normal public school was full and I've been ruined ever since. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. And then I went on to graduate PCPA. I did their two-year acting conservatory after being ruined as the official Brigetti High School Drama Club president. One thing a lot of people don't know about the PCPA, it's very, very, very difficult to be in the PCPA theater. One out of 500 people are chosen to be in that from all over the entire country, and Amherst was one of them. So that was quite an accomplishment. And you've been in different uh, plays too, right? In different theater groups. And uh, Tell us some about some of the plays you've been in. Well, I was in a play recently with Orchid Community Theater. Arsenic. I was called Arsenic and Old Lace. It was very, very fun. I loved it. You've been in some other plays. 
Um, I did hair at PCPA for our conservatory project, and I actually teach theater currently at Klein Dance Arts here in Santa Maria. So, yeah, she teaches theater it. and dance and singing, so she's cutting herself short, which is that one. <laughs> right? Right. She teaches what? You teach tap and ecstatic a dance, do jazz tap, dance? ballet, and then uh, once or twice a month we put on what's called an ecstatic dance, and it's basically an hour and a half of music from all over the world. And it's a safe place for people to move and dance however they want without having conversation. You just come in and groove with a bunch of awesome, free-spirited people. I kind of have artistic ADD, so there's many things in the arts that I love doing, be it writing poetry, to visual arts, to theater, <clears throat> to voice singing, songwriting. So I kind of go through different chapters of my life where I focus on one and then a new door will open and I go through that and currently I'm just teaching a lot. And what inspires you to actually sit down and write music? It's kind of like the muse just shows up. So I'll just start to get a thought in my head and very stream of consciously I'll pull out my phone or I'll grab my pen. I'm very tactile. I like pen and paper and I'll just start writing and the ideas will just flow and sometimes I'll write a sentence that will lead into another that will lead into another and then later on, or sometimes at the same time, a melody will come and then I'll put it to music. Have you written a lot of songs? I have, yes, over the years. Particularly in high school, I really had a huge writing spree. Now I'm a mother of two, so it's harder to juggle the time to sit down without a baby <clears throat> <laughs> crying, <laughs> and, uh, you know, interrupting the artistic process in the best of ways, but it's okay because I'm in love. So, <laughs> but yes, I, I love writing and I've written a lot. Yeah, I, I actually write myself, but I got to be in the mood like sometimes it's not like you can just sit there and write. Like, I'm going to write now, it doesn't work. You have to be in the mood. Something's got to flow where you want to get to be a good writer. But what I like about the dance class is she brings her babies with her. One of them's five and the other one's seven months, right? Four and seven months. Four and, yeah. four and seven months. <laughs> okay. And they dance them around and she dances with the babies. And it's it's just such a fun thing to do. <laughs> and I'm sure they inspire you, too, to do more writing, right? Oh, yeah, when, when I have time, <laughs> when I'm not just excited to just crawl in bed after a long day. But I say that my four-year-old has been in a band since utero because I actually played 50 shows while I was pregnant with him. And I went up to Oregon, and we did a whole tour, played about 12 shows up and down the California coast. And then I went out to the southwest to New Mexico, Arizona. <laughs> And you did a bunch of gigs in all these places? Yep. So some of them he was in my tummy and others he's come with me too. So he's done a lot of traveling. He's my percussionist. She was in my uh, showcase of talent and she was the winner of it. And she had her mother in the show. And at that time her son Hero was in there. And I kind of cheated because it was a, a tie. And I just went up on stage with my baby. And as everyone <laughs> was doing their votes, I went diapers. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's pulling your leg. <laughs> but no, she, what she did was she played the guitar and uh, was a violin at the same time. Who can sing and play two instruments at the same time? People are just like, wow. It was well, once amazing. you have a baby, you kind of become like Shiva and you grow multiple <laughs> arms. So. Well, I'll tell you, I have so much fun in the dance class. I've known her for years. We used to actually be in what's called the Poetic Justice Improv Club. It's an improv comedy. And basically... It's an opportunity for the incarcerated to have artistic expression or formerly incarcerated. So I joined the company and I would go into prisons and do singer-songwriter workshops and kind of talk about my journey as an artist. And I have some really incredible experiences from that. It made me very thankful and... Uh, very aware of some issues in the criminal justice system, what life is like on the other side, um, you know, in the prison system, and 
made me very proactive and very thankful for just things you would normally take for granted, you know. So, well, anyway, um, Amherst, before we close, would you like to sing a song for us I'd today? I'd be honored. Thank you. Uh, what, what song would you like to sing? It's called Look Within, and it's all about inspiring your own inner artist and not letting people educate that out of you basically or not letting the world jade you to where you're no longer a creative entity because we're all little creative children on the inside and that never goes away if you don't let it that's right that's right well thank you so much for being on the show my friend and thank you looking forward to hearing you sing in a few minutes here yay huh. i'm looking forward to it too thank you thank you thanks for having me Look within and see the miracle inside that's been shadowed away and taught by teacher you should only hide and throw your silly dreams away. Take your talents to the grave. Well, Lazarus was risen from the dead, though he one day passed away. But when he died, God looked at him inside, saying, Son, your ransom has been paid. No need for you to fade away. But oh, my soul, I'm losing full control and I'm ready to start again. So trade my fishes and these loaves of bread and give me new thoughts in my head. For love is seeping out this life I'm leading, but people just don't understand. We get too caught up in what's been said and done to really make amends. But oh, my soul, I'm losing full control and I'm ready to start again. So give me strength on these weakened knees and give me thoughts in my Now we have with us today Darren Doran, and he's also, he, he does some comics, right? Comedian type of work with improv. Sure. And he's a writer, and he's a singer, and he's an actor. But one of the most amazing things I know about Darren, I thought, man, I don't know how many people would do this. He gave up a really good paying job at the golf course. He was a golf 
coach, is that what you did? Sure. Golf pro, golf coach, and he gave up a good paying job to get into show business, right? And this just happened recently. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I've always been in show business. I, I mean, I've always been a singer and, a, and an actor and a musician. But at the same time, I've also always had a day job. And golf was my day job, always. And just now, I'm transitioning out. I want to be full-time, um, which I haven't done since maybe college, be just doing full-time creating and acting, singing, especially playing music right now. So, yeah, I left my uh, golf job. Yeah. And you had this good-paying golf job for, what, 10, yeah. 20 years? So I mean, I've you... been, yeah, working in golf for 20 years, and I was working at a great place. I also, I was, I'd left to help my family a little bit, you know, just my parents are, are trying to retire and from their job. Um, so it's just a whole transition that I'm really, I mean, it's just a month ago that I, that I started, so. So now you're interested in getting into like the move, do you want to do film movies sure. or do you prefer to do plays or what, what is your main you know, thing? I with? love doing plays probably more than almost anything, I'm playing and singing music and, and doing live theater. Okay, well, you're also a music writer. What inspires you to write? Like, do you, do you have, like, um, circumstances in your life that makes you think, I need to write a song about this? Does, sure. the, does the word just come out, or how does it, how does it work yeah, for you? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I, I guess a lot of the times it's uh, therapy, right, songwriting. I, um, if I feel uh, badly about something or deeply about something, uh, it helps me to... to to try to turn it into music. Right? Uh, it, a lot of times I'll write songs and I, and then after I write the song I'll go, huh, that's, that's about exactly what I worry about right now. Or, you know, that's, but it always ends up being honest to, to my inner feelings. You know? right. Even if it's, a lot of times it's, it'll be pretty hidden, you mm -hmm. know, because uh, I like songs, I like poetry that's, that's not obvious. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to write songs usually that aren't obvious. Well, Although I, the one I'm going to play today is pretty obvious. Okay. <laughs> well, I got to ask your opinion. You know, I, I was listening to Aretha Franklin last week. Uh, and I um, I, what I wonder about singers, do you have to have a laugh where you've been around the block a few times? I mean, by that I mean she sounds like she had a hard laugh. Yeah, and she right. has when yeah. you watch her show. Right. So do you feel like your soul comes out when you sing? Let's, let's just say you're a person who had a laugh, a bowl of cherries. Can you still put that out there is yeah. what I'm asking you. Well, I definitely think that a great singer, uh, it's the soul that comes out, right? You hear their whole life and they're singing. And I don't think anybody's life is just a bowl of cherries, pretty <laughs> That'd much. That'd be nice if it was. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I'm like everybody uh, feels deeply about things. And I've said before, like a, uh, you hear a 12-year-old sing a great love song and everyone says, well, that's impossible. But when I was 12 years old, I felt very deeply about love and romance and I felt hard depression and, and great happiness. So as soon as you can have those feelings, you can sing with that feeling. You know? So the great singers, to me, are the people who are just able to manifest, who are able to uh, communicate that feeling in their voice. Yeah, because when I watch singers, I go, there's a lot of really good, technically good singers, but can sure. you feel the singer? Can Why Why is this singer the X factor? And it's because I can feel it inside and that right. the audience is connecting with it. Right. Yeah, so now to get your music career going, do you need to leave Santa Maria or do you go to L.A.? Or I don't how, think how does so. this work? Even for an acting career these days, uh, I, there's, I think uh, you should always look for a community of, yeah, as a musician especially, I think the best thing is just to start playing your music and getting out there. And there's always other great musicians where, almost wherever you live, but definitely around here. And... All I want to do is sort of join the music community around here. And I have in the past with my band. And uh, wherever you are, I think you can uh, make some noise. Uh, you don't have to go to L.A. or New York. Even acting now, you, but most auditions now are done on video. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it's, it's not necessary to be in just two cities in the world if you want to play music or act or Right. Well, can you tell the audience about the band that you're in and sure. also yeah, about the studio? I want to hear about the studio because oh, okay. he's, he's in the I know he's in the process of making a studio. All right, that's true. Yeah. All right. So my band is called The Band Carter and you can find us at thebandcarter.com. 
And it's myself and my father, who's really my inspiration, you know, singer, songwriter since I was a little kid, and my younger sister. Uh, she plays harmonica and sings with me. And I play piano and guitar, and my dad plays piano and guitar and sings a little bit. But I also just want to play a lot of solo shows, and I just kind of want to do everything, or just shows with Molly and myself, or just show Molly's my sister, or shows with <laughs> Molly and me and dad, and, and only a few shows with the whole big operation, you know. But we, we were going strong there pre-pandemic, and we have a couple albums out, and you can find everything on Spotify, and especially at our website, you know, thebankcarter.com. And it, it was a great, great time, and I want to spend more time on it. So I uh, have sort of built a studio in my parents' garage, and uh, it's a practice studio and a recording studio, and we're doing a lot of home recordings right now. And I'm sort of interested in publishing for my songs, so we've been uh, recording some of my songs, some of my dad's songs, and the studio's looking cool. Like I put, I put these neat lights in, and it all works. Everything's hooked in. It's a we have a 16 track, a really old school um, machine that we're recording on. So can you do like filming in there as far as like making? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that too. We okay. want to start really without well, I have all this time. <laughs> uh, start a YouTube page that is active, you know, just where we're shooting videos every weekend, you know, live, good live videos with at least the three of us or, or you know, every day. I might be just doing like a cover a day pretty soon just to stay busy right. and use the studio, you know. Mm -hmm. And I got kind of a good camera. We'll see. Okay. Well, you told me you did some comedy also, right? Some mm -hmm. improvisational comedy. Can you tell us about that? Well, I went to uh, school. I went to Cal State Fullerton uh, Theater major and I uh, was in an improv troupe there and I've always done a lot of comedy acting and, and theater and, uh, at the Slow Rep Theater in San Luis I've done comedies and uh, I've done a lot of improv and I'm, I'm definitely a big fan of acting and, and comedies so yeah that's another thing that I I want to do next year. <laughs> so your your favorite is doing comedy or do you like more serious roles? Or you uh, my favorite is live theater. Okay, well, Mr. Dave Campbell over here, he's thinking about doing One Flew Over to Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, very cool. And um, he's looking for people. He wants me to be Miss Ratchet. Wow. So I think that would be so much fun. Very cool, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to do a lot soon, uh, but it's only so much time. And the band, sort of, the music is the first thing I want to... That's your first priority. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Well, his music is definitely unique. He plays the guitar and piano and has an amazing voice, just like Amorous Taylor does. So I'm feeling so blessed to have both of them on the show today. But before we end this, is there anything else you'd like the audience to know about you? I've lived here most of my life, California, grew up here, moved down south for years to, to try to be a singer and an actor, and, and moved back 10 years ago to work in golf. And... Uh, yeah, I, I love it here. It's just, you know, I'm proud to be from the Central Coast. And for sure. he needs to let people know, too, he's a professional golfer. Well, I'm I not, mean, he, I'm not his num your number is what, like 74? 70. Oh, well, I'm like a, a four handicap if, for people who know I'm, or a scratch when I practice. But uh, yeah, I'm a golfer. I love that's, golf. That's pretty good. <laughs> Well, would you like to sing a song for us? Yeah, sure. Okay, what, what song would you like to sing? This one's called You Broke My Heart, which I wrote a long time ago, so I'm good now. But uh, I talk, I, this one, like I said, is a little more straightforward than some of my songs. It's pretty obvious what it's about. That's the one you but, sang in the showcase, right? That is, yeah. I love that song. Oh, good. That's a good, okay. good one. Good. All right, well, thanks for being Thank on you. The Lindsley Show. Thank you very much. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> To the corner cafe And I ate with a friend I told her that I was okay When she asked how you'd 
happened when I went to that party. No one was taking me home. I wish I was alone. But I'm not what I want to be. Just baked like I ought to be. And it's not what you've done to me. It's how I've been done. You broke my heart. You tore me apart. I can't remember before you were there. And I'm dying to blame you for the way that I live. I'm feeling that everyone has only so much to give. So I haven't kissed anyone like the way that we kiss. And I haven't missed anyone like the way that you're missed. Lying in silence. No one is making me warm. I wish I wasn't home. But I'm not what I want to be. I'm just baked like I ought to be. And it's not what you've done to me. It's how I've been done. You broke my heart. You tore me apart. And I can't remember before you were there. The tears you were crying still roll down my face. And all of our memories that one cannot be erased. So I drink to good spirit at the watering hole. I keep hoping their spirits can awaken my soul. I saw a revival. But all of the magic had gone I wish I could be strong But I'm not what I want to be Just baked like I ought to be And it's not what you've done to me It's how I've been done You broke my heart You tore me apart And I can't no, I can't. You broke my heart. You tore me apart. Oh, you broke my heart. You tore me Well, thanks for joining us today on The Leslie Show. I hope you had a good time. And we'll see you next year where Leslie's a grandma. She calls herself a glamma. But anyway, it's going to be a good show. We're going to start out probably learning about feng shui, how to clean out the house. And we're going to have all kinds of good topics. So see you next year. Bye now and never let anyone take your mojo. Bye now. This is The Leslie Show. <laughs>